Well, we were out a couple of weeks ago and we did a video called four types of car camping. Well, this next type isn't necessarily car camping, but it shows another way that you can spend the weekend and enjoy all kinds of weather with no real issues. And that is a small cargo trailer. And this is Wayne and he has graciously said that he would let us do a tour of his how long is that Wayne uh, four, it's 14 foot all the way to the nose but actually 10 foot living space 10 foot of living space by seven wide 80 inches 81 okay and you're about six one aren't you and you uh -huh. can stand up nice and straight yeah, I can stand up and stretch inside I can lay down crossways of it and not hit my head and feet you know I, I lay straight all right cool all right, let me take a once around on the outside here, give you an idea of what we're talking about. This is one of those new style that doesn't have the blunt front. It's got the pointed front end. You can see that he had them add a vent and a window when he ordered this trailer. And then there's one other thing that's different from a stock trailer. And I don't mean like a stock as in horses and cows, but just the basic trailer. Oh, let's do this real quick. Thanks for your service, Wayne. Anytime. All right, that gives you an idea of the outside. The other thing was this door. A lot of them come with just the regular door that don't have the opening there and you can also see one little dilemma here is if you're inside in the middle of the night somebody decides to come along and close that you're you're trapped in there so what he has done is ingeniously added a way to lock that so that that can't be done and then the regular rv style lock will lock from the inside so it gives him the security wayne you want to show us the interior Well, first thing I notice walking in is carpet. Carpet is a basement, carpeting made for a basement. It's kind of a shag. It has a 5 8 inch felt liner underneath the carpeting and then a vapor barrier below the carpet. It's not really a true shag. It's just not a Berber, right? No, it is not a Berber. I made sure of that. All right. Well, where do you want to start? Let's just start right here. All right, let me let me come in and get a better view here. Man, this is pretty sweet. And now it's going to be warm. All okay. right. This is just a, a run-of-the-mill pantry. I've got it at Lowe's. It just fits right in that corner. I put a lock on or a hook on the door that locks going down the road. That way everything don't fall out. I put shelves here in the front. Of course, they look like a junkyard right now. And then I made this little table. And my glasses are fogged up. We can't see nothing. That is sweet. Hang on. But the table, table folds down. It's just really simple. Just got a little brace there, right? Uh-huh. The simpler, the better. And then my stove just sits right in there, and I can have my morning coffee, and I'm not grouchy. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> microwave. Microwave, toaster oven. Okay. Somewhere in here, there's a jet ball. I put this, uh, what do you call this stuff? Just uh, styrofoam in. plastic? The, the foam insulation. Styrofoam insulation. Mm -hmm. It's just wedged in there. So far, I haven't had any trouble with it. Uh, this one here is just a little loose, but it's, it hasn't fall. And how thick it, How thick is that insulation? Uh, one inch. That, that gives you a pretty good R value then. Yeah. All right, well, let's back toward the front, if you don't mind. Okay. I see you have two different heaters there. You've got, yeah. we, we've got electric here, so you've got your electric heater going. And if we weren't at an electric site, I believe you do carry a small yes, I have. Uh, inverter type generator, right? Uh, I don't have it with me today because I knew we had electric here. 
Okay, and then if we don't have electric, I've got my buddy L. The buddy heater, which is pretty much a standard for most of us. Now, this is interior rated, and I've camped in here with it uh, 18, 20 degrees, and we complained about it being hot in here. And it's Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's. I like the fact you've got a stool that that will allow you to move around, which is really nice for in here, isn't it? Yes. That wasn't my garage, but it migrated here real quick and found itself a new home. Okay. Now on this wall, I see shelves, uh, hooks. I put hooks everywhere. There's hooks everywhere. But one thing I did do, I noticed I was losing a lot of heat out of these vents because it's just metal. There's no insulation. As a matter of fact, that feels real cold right now. So I just cut out these pieces of the styrofoam insulation, same as this in the ceiling, and it just sticks up there nice. and blocks a lot of that cold air. Not nice. pretty. I see you've basically done the same type of thing with your uh, roof vent. Yes, and you see three layers here. That's because I have a fan back here in the storage boxes that can go up in here and forced air ventilation. Great. Either in or out. Yeah, so that's just a standard crank type of... Yeah, it's just uh, a standard with no RV vent. Okay. And then on the back wall, I see you have a shelf across the back, which... Explain how, explain how you fix this so that if you wanted to use this for something different, like bring your motorcycle with you or your kayak or something, how you can utilize your back doors. If you can see how those are hooked on with like a dog leash, there's four of them. Of course, you have to take everything off the shelf. Then the shelf completely unhooks, except for one hook, this front one right, no, the back one back there. And then the whole shelf swings around and hangs against the wall right here. Then I can haul my motorcycle in here, kayak, furniture, if I, whatever, you know. Uh -huh. It turns it into a uh, cargo trailer real quick. All right, and then for a lot of us, a good night's sleep is so important, and it looks like you're set up for, for that for sure. Oh, uh, I took this uh, on a deer hunting trip this fall, and me and a buddy of mine, we both slept in here and we agreed real fast that we were having a tremendously better time hunting because we were getting quality rest. Yeah. We weren't trying to lay in a tent, trying to keep warm. We could stand up in here and change clothes, stretch, have a cup of coffee. So I see you've got a second cot there. That Yeah, this is another cot. And it's just, it seems to work real good. Just a piece of a shock cord on two little hooks yeah. and it holds both cots and the chair up there uh, you know, so they're just not bouncing around the floor. And that's an oversized Coleman cot, isn't it? Uh, 30 by 80. 30 by 80, and it does have a small pad on it? Yes. So it comes with a pad. It comes with this pad. And then here, I took a, I believe they call that a Big Agnes. Mm -hmm. Inflatable mattress. And then I took a sleeping bag liner and turn the sleeping bag liner inside out and put over the big Agnes. Because it was real slick? Because it was real slick. Mm -hmm. Now I've got this, uh, what do you call this? It's like a, a fleece, isn't fleece, it? Fleece, kind of like a fleece yeah. liner against me that I'm laying on and sleeping bag over the top of me. So you've got those rolled up in the corner there. Yeah, that's just an old fashioned sleeping bag. And one of the containers are my down sleeping bags. Well, you know, Whenever I uh, was doing my van, I, I was adamant about that I wanted to use the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And I believe that you've done the same thing here. Uh -huh. Very easily set up. It gives you the ability to utilize this trailer for basically anything that you want, yes. including a weekend when it's, you know, below freezing now, and snow on I'm the ground. If I'm putting a tractor or something in here, I will lay cardboard plywood something on the floor yeah and one other thing only other thing i want to add is this light when i bought the trailer it was hooked up to the uh trailer lights so you had to have the trailer hooked up for this light to work 
Yeah. Well, I redone that and just run it off of a battery, deep cycle battery. It runs to this switch right here, main beam. There you go. And that way, and I, I've run that light for like 20 hours, just left it on to I'll, see how much it would run the battery down. Off a deep LED. cycle battery, you got a week or better yeah. there. And I see that yes. you always safety first. There's your carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide there. Over here is fire alarm. Well, Wayne, we appreciate it. You've really got yourself a nice setup here. Oh, so. uh, I run a, a 30 amp circuit into it. You can't see it, but it's down underneath there. There it is. So that's his setup for when he's plugged into electricity. Got a 30 amp main and a 15, two 15 amp breakers. Uh -huh. One for each of his uh, receptacles there. And then up here, I run this, uh, power strip surge protector only reason i've done that is because the cord on this is only about a foot long yeah yeah all righty well like i said nice setup man thanks for sharing with us not a problem all right so there you have it just another way to enjoy a weekend of camping geriatric version yeah so, and, and looky there. <laughs> He's driving. You got There's driver's old. license. Let me see your license and ID. Have you been drinking? <laughs>